my web design workflow has changed again and I think I'm unstoppable right now. Call it your number when I need someone Give me the king comfort Make sure that I come first Fireball summer It was a fireball summer Let me show you a whole project start to finish and then you can steal my process. I'll also tell you why the best designers color their wireframes. But first, do you know how to design a website? Are you sure about that? Well, you can just forget about that because all the methods are constantly evolving and right now we can really deliver true magic with speed. You can design a website, but then it's already coded and you can make interactive, unique components using AI and then one-click deploy. No handoff, no developers, no asking the developer to move something by one pixel because your designer's mind is feeling like it's a little bit off and then them saying to you, no. I hated that. Today I'm gonna show you how I'm designing a full website for my upcoming mobile app called Polar Duck. Polar Duck is a beautiful cold shower called swimming and ice bath tracker for the Apple Watch. I've shown you some interactions from it before, like this cute little duck in the header, but now let's explore how a website for an interesting app like that could look like. My process now, whether it's apps or websites, always starts on paper. It's because slowing down a bit and getting away from screens really helps with creativity. And then when you're at the computer, you can go so much faster now then having this balance, I believe, is really important. I do my first sketch in a smaller notebook, outlining some ideas, and it's usually pretty rough. I often do it outside, on walks, in cafes, but then I bring it back, bring it back home to my studio, to my office, and at this desk behind me, I take out a different notebook, usually a little bit larger, and then I start making a second version of it, this time with colors. Why color a wireframe? That's the question I got the most from people. And the answer is not what you think. It's not really about it looking nice for a case study, although come to think of it right now, maybe it is a little bit of that, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is switching your brain to a multimodal state. Basically, when you're sketching with the pen, making that rough draft of your idea on paper, you're working in a specific way of thinking. But then, if you switch to colors, you can slow down, you can have a completely different approach, just taking the time to switch from linear thinking into just filling you know, colors between the lines, allows you to have some deep thoughts about how it works. And brain exercise like that helps with neuroplasticity. I'm getting way better ideas in the coloring phase on how to make interactions for the products, how to make new features for them. It's really a great way to innovate. This video is brought to you by Framer. I've been a big fan of Framer ever since their CoffeeScript days, and I really loved the Hearst apps that I was coding in Framer back then. Framer is one of the tools that I genuinely use myself. I pay for it, I have a license. They just launched their Design Pages feature, which basically means that you don't have to worry about structure and breakpoints and auto layouts and all that stuff, but you can just design different iterations like you would do in a normal design tool. And that is a perfect way to to mock up the concepts for my website in high fidelity. And with this code, you can get one month of the pro plan completely free. Go check them out, link in the description. I already had my app mostly designed on the phone. This is how the main screen looks like. And this is the cute interaction that happens when you tilt your phone sideways, the duck is floating in that direction. The main idea behind this was a delight sandwich. So I was going for a high fidelity, highly polished raster graphics header and a similar footer, the ocean floor. But then all the stuff between should be rather minimal. So I started sketching the rough idea first. Then I noted out what core elements and features, including some of the interactive or delightful features, I want to have 
in the website for sure and what are optional things. Now, when this is done, I need to bump up the fidelity while staying on paper. So I'm making a second sketch, but this time I'm adding colors, different highlights, different markings, and just going crazy with it. The idea is to recreate the rough wireframe first, and then during the coloring, just any idea that comes to your head, write it down in the margins, annotate, add little arrows, pointy things, just don't focus on it as a process that has to be logical and make sense. Things will come to you when you start coloring. While coloring the sky, I came up with the concept that what if the color of the sky actually reflected the weather and time of day? So if somebody went to the website at night, the sky above would be darker. Now let's jump into Framer and create a new design file. And the good thing about those design files is that you can arrange stuff exactly like you want it. You don't need to worry about the flow of elements and how they're gonna work in responsive breakpoints and all that. You can just drag and drop stuff, draw rectangles like we used to, and just enjoy the process. Because at this stage, being confined into a grid layout can be pretty limiting. So I took the initial sketch, some assets from the mobile app, made them a little bit wider and then added them to the canvas. Of course, I wanted the sky to change the color and I also wanted the duck in the header to follow the mouse cursor. Basically, if you move the mouse left, the duck swims to the left. And if you move the mouse right, it swims to the right. And then if you open the website on a phone, it has the same tilt accelerometer experience. Then using the built-in wireframer AI structure, I explained the structure of the content between the header and the footer, and it quickly generated a nice wireframe for me to fill with content. Then I duplicated the entire artboard and made a couple of variants of it to have something to pick from to promote to the live one. And I think I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, we picked the design and now it's time to add all the interactive features like the duck. So I comment K and went into Framer Workshop and then explained specifically what I want. For the duck element, I wanted a confine, so a container of around 200 pixels in the middle of the screen. And I wanted a red square initially to kind of move with the mouse. And if you know my stuff, then you probably know why I picked the red square. It's gonna be replaced by the duck in the later stage. And I did the exact same thing for the background, just specifying at what hours, what color should it be, and Framer just generated an entire new specific component for my use case. So if you have those crazy ideas like the duck following your mouse or the sky changing colors, you can just add them right now to your design. And I believe that we are in a time where just those little delights are something that we kind of can't really not add anymore because they're so easy to do once you come up with them then it would be a crime not to add them. Now, when we combine it all together, the initial idea, the concept from the sketches, the plant delight, an easy way to outline and design things now they drag and drop, promote it to the coded website, make the breakpoints, make the interactive components, all without needing your own developers, and all with the pixel precisions of a designer. So you can just kind of pinpoint everything and make it exactly like you want it. And nobody's gonna tell you that it's impossible to do in CSS because it turns out that everything is possible. And that's really awesome. You can just connect your domain, one click, and the website is up. If you wanna change something, you go back to it, modify the content, modify the elements, publish, the website is up. And it used to be pretty impossible and time consuming and not really worth it from time and financial perspective to make these things because they were just taking too much time and energy. But right now, you're a designer, you're making worlds, you're making awesome things. And this is the future that I envision. This is the future that I love making beautiful things, making delight, and making it happen, making it go live. When designers are in charge and they have that designer eye and the ideas for the delightful interactions, 
then as users, as makers, as builders, we're all gonna have a beautiful day.